the idea, I came up with the idea first as what would it be like if a murderer's victims agreed with him? And I, I toyed with various ideas, whether it would be like a village, sort of English village, and a postman goes mad and kills everyone, um, and somehow thinks that they agree with it. Or, or as in this case, uh, a more urban story, um, to suit my name, but also the environment where it's more easy to film it, really, to be honest, and more credible. A big city where anything can happen, being London. So I was thinking about that idea on and off while struggling, as always, to make bigger films, you know, which was like, you know, just to make a bigger film with loads of actors that are really well known. But um, that in uh, endless process eventually got me so annoyed that I thought, well, let's just raise some money, let's just make a movie with a, a reasonable level budget, you know, not a micro micro, but one which is not going to require stars. A favourite of mine is Ed Kemper. You see this kind of really charming, enormous man who was about six foot seven or eight. You know, there's no doubt his victims didn't stand much chance. Uh, he, but uh, he, he, you know, he photographs as sort of looking quite normal because you don't realise his size, of course. But anyway, he was the one, one of the very few who ever turned himself in after he'd murdered his mother, uh, who he said had driven him to kill all these pretty young women. What's interesting about him is after a lot of planning of the murders, he had these kind of curious flashes of humanity where if a girl chose to go the right way, you know, when he hitch, she hitchhiked, she would be spared. But if it was the wrong way, you know, which was, you know, a bit like in the Scream films, you know, death is left and right is, is life. And she always goes to the left um, when the running girl runs away. So, so, so unfortunately, most of her girls chose death without knowing it, but his girls. But, uh, but he did occasionally show a flash of humanity. He was very dis disgusted with himself for what he did. Uh, which not all killers are. So many, you know, Fred West, some of the other British ones, and a whole raft of league of American serial killers have all suffered the bang on the head, which uh, the area uh, uh, in the court, I don't know where it is in the, the frontal lobe, but there is an area which effectively, if it suffers trauma, it, it releases, it stops the inhibition that would uh, inhibit people from acting on the most crazy desires that are violent. And this is a, a well-proven area of, of many serial killers. Uh, so if you have a slightly psychopathic personality and you uh, don't feel much pity anyway or inhibition and this happened to you, plus the relevant abuse that might have happened or the relevant you know igniting factors uh, such as Baz's bang on the head and his rage against the gang who, who who were ready to or who did assault him and were then rioters so uh there you have your you know there is normally the inciting incident just like in the screenplay it's normally the serial killer has this kind of inciting incident I had written a draft of the script um, earlier, before the riots, just before, when some of the main issues that are in there were certainly apparent. And, and it was a gangland. He was against... Baz was being attacked and dealing with the gangs on the estates, and we were talking about London you know, knife crime and things like that, which were, again, are, are not far off, you know, like the issues that were current. But the riots, of course caused me to then re-examine the script and do a whole new draft where, where, where they're hanging over the film and are the catalyst because I thought, well, this is also perfect in that you know, there was a, two reactions in society. One was much the dominant one, which was, uh, you know, they're mad and we don't understand them and we would like to dispose, you know, if only I could sort out those looters myself. I might do so, you know, and p support the idea of, you know, the, the the Turkish, I think it was Turkish or Turkish Cypriot community who defend themselves with baseball bats and people who cheered that. I, I just 
react as a sponge and sort of think, well, this happened, it was pretty frightening, and it was a pretty major event in Britain, and we don't know if it'll happen again. But, you know, to ignore it would be mad if you were doing a film about vigilantism uh, in Britain today. That's the obvious big thing that happened in, in recent times. The killer is killing because of ills as he sees it in society. And just as, you know, the Bronson character in Death Wish killed because of violent mugging, it was the big thing in New York in, in the 70s, um, then uh, here riots would be a, as likely a reason as any other to trigger certainly someone who believes in enforcing the law as his career to become a killer. Once someone's established a rep on social networks and social media, they just people just look for them and find them, um, and you know they can they could continue operating like this. And I think it's only a matter of time till someone really does go the whole hog, you know, not just, um, not just post the manifesto on Facebook and email his friends, but create an online following that eggs him on, or in some cases criticised by suspect, you know, if someone captured the public imagination with vigilante type killings, would 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 get some support, you know, crazy though it may seem. If people will encourage someone to jump off a high building, as has happened many times, you know, go on, jump. Um, uh, it would be, be surprising if they didn't support a killer who disposes of, you know, uh, human traffickers or rapists or whatever he says they are, you know, in his book. Baz is there not as a real study of serial killers, but so that you can think about what propels people to do things in society that are wrong in the sense of taking the law into their own hands and what kind of ego does it require and would you do this? You know, The whole point about social media in the film is everyone interacts with it now in the world or pretty well everyone who's online and, and has a mobile but you know, we, we are all Baz in a way because we could all get enraged by everyday things that happen uh, that are really upsetting. They have their charm or they have their way that they are able to to deceive people, to manipulate, to lie very well. And those are the ones, because they, they become serial killers because they don't get caught. They are very plausible, charming like Baz, you know, or in a position where people will trust them like Baz. Ted Bundy, was another model for me in this film. Because in a way, he's got that fresh-faced, handsome, you know, sort of nice, ordinary-looking bloke um, look like uh, Kevin. Um, and and as Baz. But Ted Bundy would be regularly on the night uh, lines for Samaritans, begging people not to kill themselves, and then go out, you know, and, and dismem kill and dismember a pretty young girl. Uh, so... But Ted Bundy combined this extraordinary contradiction. We've got some interesting night stuff in the film, you know, flame in the riots. That was dictated by, of course, what had really happened and how we were shooting it with the available light from flame or street lights. Um, uh, the night lights of riding around London, again, certain dominant kind of feel, shallow focus because we were always in Baz's mind and with him, you know, trying to show him up close and make it feel like a film, not like video. So that was, that's there. So that's about the style of it, really. You know, it's a, using light in a, in, a, in, a, in a positive, strong way, not necessarily naturalistic all the time, but showing a murderous frame of mind.